If you want to see how we uh, restored this uh, nice little uh, chair, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, Memphis Monday uh, 174. Uh, today we're going to uh, try to restore a an antique, and I use that uh, that term advisedly. I think it's more like first half of the 20th century. Um, it's uh, pretty de uh, badly damaged. The uh, last week we kind of got uh, lucky. We were restoring that table and. Once we got into it, we found out it wasn't all that broken. Um, but I don't think we're going to be that lucky uh, this, this time. But anyway, we're not going to get anything done. We're not going to get lucky. We're not going to get anything unless we do what? That's right. We need to knock off that chit-chat and get to work. big structural problem with this chair is that the seat has come unglued. Um, you can see the split in it. It's also unglued here that somebody's tried to uh, glue it, but the uh, the rest of it seems fairly sound, uh, but this seat has come from together. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I don't have a plan. Uh, let me uh, fiddle with it for a while and come back when I got a plan. All well, right now, I'm having an argument with myself. Um, the logic's kind of telling me to take this thing apart. Try to take it apart. My gut's telling me not to take it apart. What would you do? Let me fiddle with it and see if I can uh, break anything loose. Here's one of the problems I'm having. These, this chair back is, is got this through tenon here with a wedge in it. So that's going to be very difficult to get out. Old timey screw. Getting it apart, the, uh, the reason it's coming apart so hard not because the glue is any good in the joints. The glue is gone in the joints, but it's just such a tight fit. Now it looks like I can drive this uh, seat back out with a... Oh, there's our pile of rubble. And here's our seat back. Let's see if uh, any of these other joints want to come apart. Well, there's our joint we've got to fix right there. Um, I'm going to run that through the joiner and see if we can dress that edge up. going to glue this thing up. I figure uh, the worst that can happen is I screw it up some way and then I have to build, make a new seat. Of course the reason I wouldn't want to build a new seat is because then we lose the old seat. We'll let this uh, glue up uh, rest for a while. Uh, let's shine up some of the other parts. These are the styles that hold at the back, and they're uh, embedded in a through tenon. This is a through tenon with a wedge uh, driven down inside of it. What I'm doing is I'm taking that wedge out. I'm uh, sanding up these parts, 
and cleaning cleaning everything up. I'm uh, cleaning everything up without wrecking anything. There's an expectation, you know, when you restore something that you're going to give the thing back, you know, sparkly and new. But then on the other hand, as a restorer, you don't want to destroy the patina, you know, and the history of the piece. So it's kind of a compromise. Let me show you what I mean. Here's what I kind of mean on this, um, this top rail here. You can see the build up of uh, probably dirt from years of use people grabbing the uh, people grabbing the top rail you know you you're tempted to uh, you know and it's all worn around the edges here it's all worn you can see the finish is off on these corners so you're tempted to you know sand all that uh, patina off but you don't want to do that that's history that's hundred that's uh, you know perhaps 50 80 years of uh, of use and history in that piece so you don't want to do that another thing I'm doing is I'm not I'm not taking apart these these parts that didn't come apart easily I'm just leaving them what I'm doing here is I'm really not staining the piece. I'm just kind of going over it with some stain and filling in some of the places where the where the stain has we're down to bare wood. Some of the nicks and scratches. Of course I don't know why this thing broke and uh, I don't have any theory I want to defend. So what I'm going to do is try to figure out a way to uh, reinforce this thing. This bottom is pretty wrecked. I'm going to have to do at least a moderate around amount of sanding on it. In order to save the seat, I've got to put some braces on here, or it's just going to break again. Um, so I fashioned these uh, little braces here, and I've got them laid out so that I can mark where I want my screws. Now here you can see what I just did. Um, I just put this little mark right in the center of this board, and I did that for. Uh, each of the boards so that my screw my screws go in at the right place. Now I was going to put two screws in but I think I'm going to go with one. back together that's a goal anyway
what I'll be doing is put a little put a little glob of glue right on the top and then as the mortise or the as the tenon slides in the mortise it will distribute the glue inside the mortise I probably don't these uh, mortises and tenons fit so well I probably don't even need any glue because the glue that was on there was pretty much pretty much shot and it was still not easy to get to get apart You got to kind of do this all at one time so that things can move around. You don't want to let the glue set on any of the parts. Okay, what happens here are these, uh, this goes in first and then the chair back, these, these go in last and they're held in with a wedge. So let's put this in first. And these screws go in last. I think the reason these screws are even here is to make this thing easier to assemble. By not having a mortise and tenon in here, they can just put this last piece in and, and then just screw it together. The plugs were missing uh, on one side, so what I'm going to do is just put new plugs in all four holes. Well, you remember the uh, wedges we took out? Now we're going to put them back in. By rights, I should have uh, I should have installed the back before I installed the legs, but I didn't. So I'm going to stain all the uh, bare wood in this uh, color called red oak. I'll put it on and then I'll just put it on the bare spots and then wipe it off and we should get a pretty good match. Well you might be tricked into believing that that's the original finish on there. It really looks pretty good. And I dabbed some uh, stain on these uh, plugs. Let's uh, turn it over and see if we can do the top of the seat. This is going to be harder to match. Those are down to bare wood. Let's give it a whirl. Well, there's our little uh, restored chair. Uh, we were able to match that color real good on the uh, on the bottom. 
Uh, we had to take it all the way apart to get to the bottom. Uh, we resurfaced that joint, glued it back together uh, using biscuits. And then we reinforced it with a couple of braces underneath. You can't see them. Um, the whole chair, all the warts and tenons are <coughs> were sound. Um, so we just re-glued them. And I think it's good as new now. Well, that does it for another Memphis Monday. Memphis Monday 174. We restored this old uh, chair. Call it an antique. You know, uh, it depends on your, on your definition of antique. Uh, for furniture, it's usually 100 years old. And I don't think this is 100 years old, but it, it was built in the first half of the 20th century. So it's uh, what you might call a vintage. Uh, I thought it was going to be a killer of a project. I thought it was going to be hard, take several days, but we finished it in one day. So um, everything went, went off like clockwork. So every now and then that happens. But I'm pretty satisfied with it. We cleaned up that uh, joint, uh, knit it together with uh, uh, biscuits, and saw those braces underneath. All the mortise and tenons were a real good shape. Uh, the whole chair was in good shape except for the, uh, except for the seat. So uh, everything went back together perfect and everything's good. All right, so uh, like and favorite and share and Facebook and tweet and all the stuff you do on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.